Welcome to a video called Introduction to Git. My name is Dan and I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of the popular version control system called Git. Uh, Git is completely free. Git is uh, cross-platform and many groups are using Git now. In fact, Git has become pretty much the most popular version content management system across software um, especially gaining popularity in sort of the last five years um, and for good reason because it's awesome and I'm gonna explain to you just why that is but in this video really I'm just gonna introduce you to some of the topics uh, go over some of the terminology uh, we're gonna clone our first repo and poke around and just sort of learn from it a little bit together um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to clone a repo. I'm going to give it the URL. So we are going to clone a repo called Trick from GitHub. And GitHub is a very popular um, website for sharing source code um, and specifically targeted towards a Git application obviously. So what's happening now is uh, locally Git is creating a new folder called trick. Um, the remote it says counting objects. The remote there has been a connection established to the remote which is GitHub and it is collecting all the objects and data it needs for the trick repository compressing them and sending them over the internet hypertubes to our local box here um, and then it uncompresses it locally and uh, checks everything out and so lo and behold if I do an ls I now have a trick directory and so when I change directory into the trick directory uh, git will respect commands related to the repo when I'm in this directory if that makes sense so as an example a git command is git status and you'll notice that it's saying I'm on a branch called master and my branch is up to date with origin master it says there's nothing to commit everything is clean and so what I meant about being in the directory is that obviously if you were to go up a directory and do git status it's gonna say not a git repository so that's pretty basic stuff, but um, if your Git commands aren't working, you're probably not in a Git repository. So when I say repository, what I'm referring to is not just this folder called trick, but the entire history of the development of this content exists in the repository, and that repository is called trick. So it may seem a little bit redundant, but when, when you refer to a repository in Git, it, it is no different. This local repository that I have right here is no different than the repository it came from, except that it exists on a different machine. So that's different from a centralized approach like Subversion where there has to be a central master location for the repository and the clients or users of the system simply check out the latest version or a particular version or branch of it. In this case, in Git, you have the full history of the repo. And if you want to look at the history, a really easy way to do that is to look at the commit log. And you do that just by typing git log. And what this does is it shows you newest first the commits that exist on the current branch. Um, and so 
I'm going to go over commits in more detail soon, but basically you can think of a commit as a change set to your working files. So the latest commit in this case is identified by this unique SHA-1, which is just 40 character string. And we see that the author of this commit is someone named Alex Lin. We can see his email address. We know the date that the commit was made by Alex. And there's a short summary here of what uh, Alex describes as the content of this change set. So if you want to continue, you can scroll down and see the whole history. Press space bar, you'll go even faster. Um, but you can see that, you know, a lot of work has been done here. And you don't need any connection to the remote here to see this history. So what that means is, you know, if I lost internet right now, I can still see the full history of this project, which is pretty cool. So that, that's what we sort of mean when, when people talk about Git being decentralized. It's sort of a new paradigm uh, compared to the old way of checking in and checking out files through a centralized system that requires a connection to do pretty much anything. In Git, you can work completely offline on a laptop, on an airplane, wherever. You don't need a connection to the centralized repository to do your job, which is totally awesome. So, talk a little bit about commits. I think the best thing to do now is to make a commit. So, this git status command, real quick, this you're going to use the most. So I have an alias, um, just a bash alias called gs that does the exact same thing. You're going to want that. Um, but this is your way of seeing what have I changed. So here's an example. Let's just go into this configure script. And we're going to go to the bottom and just put a comment here that says, this is super cool. And then I'm going to write the file and quit out. And now if I do a git status, git shows me that I changed this file. And it gives you some instructions on sort of helpful hints on what you can do. So this, this is git telling you, Hey, I found a change on this file. This is different than what the last commit says the content of this file should be. I'm just letting the user know that I found it. That's, that's all this is doing. So if you say for some reason like the change of me putting a comment saying it's super cool and you wanted to commit this change, the first thing you would do is add the file. So you get add configure. Now if you do a git status, you will notice that we see something very similar, except it's slightly different, and this is important. So up here we saw these are changes not staged for commit. So it found the change that we made, and it just says, I see this change. When we do a git add, which we did right here on this file, we are telling git, hey, we want these changes um, the changes that I have made are important, and we want to stage them in what's called the index. And the index is anything you see in green when you do a git status. So I'm going to talk in depth about the index in subsequent videos. But for now, just know that it's the staging area, and it lets you define what you're about to commit. And so now that we have something staged, we can do a commit. And this, this is awesome. This is going to tell you, this is Git saying, I don't know who you are because you're a new user. So you will run into this the first time you use commit. Um, so we're just going to walk through this real quick. So it tells you exactly what to do. It just wants a user email. And I will just give it dan at dan.com, which isn't real. You should use a real email address, but for the purposes of this video, not going to do that. So the next one is username. I'm just going to call Dan. 
Okay. So, now, just do git status again. We're exactly where we were. Now that I have a username set up in git, git knows who I am, I can commit. Git doesn't allow anonymous commits. So what we have here is the chance to write your commit message. So this is where you will describe what are these changes. So I'm going to say added fancy comment in configure script. And we're basically going to save the file and then exit. And what we have here is Git telling us that we made a commit. And it shows here that we're on the master branch. This is the commit SHA-1, the first few characters of it, and a summary of, of what we said the commit was. So it says one file changed, two insertions, because we added two lines. So now, if I do git status, we'll notice that there's nothing showing as modified it, which makes sense because we just committed the change to the repository. The repository now has the history of that change and we are currently checked out to the state of that, which means if I were to open configure, I would see at the bottom of the file the line that I added. Exactly what you would expect. We'll also notice here that Git is telling us that our branch is ahead of origins master branch by one commit, which makes sense. We just made a commit. So it's it's saying here, if you want to share your changes, if you want to git push, and I'll go over that more in more detail in a different video. Basically, it's just reminding you of your options here. So git has sort of these helpful hints. And it's saying there's nothing to commit, everything is clean in the working directory. So now we should see in our git log that we made a commit, and it should be the newest commit. And we do. We see it right at the top. My commit, my unique SHA-1 identifier, and the comment that I made. One last thing that's really important about this commit that we just made, um, and this is sort of implied, but it, it might not be clear to you if you're just starting with Git. This commit was made locally meaning it exists in the history of our repo, but this commit did not establish any connection to a remote. It did not push any data anywhere. Everything happened locally. So if I didn't have internet, that would be fine because all it's doing is committing my change to the history of my local repository. So that's a little confusing to people that first are introduced to the term commit because it sounds, you know, so official. Um, but it's really not. So don't be afraid to commit. Um, it's all happening locally. And the way that you share commits is through what's called pushing and pulling. And I'm going to cover that in subsequent videos. So thanks for watching.